In honor of Women's History Month, we've been talking with female leaders in sports, politics, business, and entertainment. And this morning, we are focusing on... Every Friday during Women's History Month... month long we've been celebrating women's history month by talking with female leaders in sports politics business and entertainment and this nobody takes down angus love love seven easy there's a reason why after 100 channels destroyed angus love love seven is still here there's a reason why nobody want to get in a beef with Angel Snuck Nuck 7. But you don't take me seriously. And now your ass is barbecue. Thank <laughs> you. 
We are in a state of emergency. singer and black activist Sam Cooke wrote the lyrics to his song, A Change Is Gonna Come, it was very direct and to the point. With some changes to it, the song was still digestible. In the year 2019, black folks continue to go through the change rather than direct the change. A community activist named Talik Ibn Rock has made an appeal similar to what Sam Cooke was asking for a change. It's said that the meek shall inherit the earth. We ask when. When will the landlords give the meek a free lease? Mr. Ebenrod is humbly asking for the state of Mississippi. 
This is Dusty Basement Studios, and we approve of this message. The Mississippi Campaign represents everything that you claim that you want. The beginning of an all-black independent nation. The ability to control your own resources. Your politics. The law. Be able to do your own thing for a change. Create an, an economy. Create and produce goods that Africa or anybody on the planet would want. You're fake, you don't want to do nothing. Three hours talking about the Mississippi campaign. I wanted him to assume that I'm a person looking to uh, get down with this Mississippi campaign. How, how does one get started with this? Sir? <laughs> Mr. Angel Snupnup. What was the question again? I didn't He still didn't answer the question, sir. He still didn't answer the question. Still, you still didn't answer the question, sir. It's you got to allow a child to grow up. Some people spoil their children. They won't let them grow up. They keep, no matter how old they get, they keep them. They want to do things for the child. Let your child grow up. Let these black people grow up.
As always, in the name of our ancestors, peace forever and always. I want to thank you for taking a moment of your time to join us on this Sunday afternoon to bring a message that I hope is beneficial, that I hope is positive and give us something to think about. It's not about right or wrong. It's about what is true and what can help us accomplish our long-term goal. The topic that we have chosen for this afternoon is Mandingo. The only thing that makes a black man a man is his penis. This topic may seem inappropriate on a Sunday morning or afternoon. This topic may be viewed as inappropriate on a Sunday and our brother Robert is telling us that this is the first day of fasting, the holy month of Ramadan for those who are believers in the prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him forever. Since it is Ramadan, and since the, the program or the theme for Ramadan is positivity, I would think that this would be an appropriate topic because it causes us to elevate ourselves from a low position in life to elevate. Sometimes to elevate or to bring ourselves to a higher level, sometimes it brings us hurt and pain because many of us already believe we have reached the level. So there's no need for me to seek anything more. If we have reached the level, then why are you complaining? Why are you steady writing grief? Why are you steady complaining? Why are your problems not decreasing, but your problem is, or increasing? Your problems are increasing instead of decreasing. There are those, if you are a male, and you do not like persons who speak about your gender and you easily cry and you easily upset. So many things are against the black man. Somebody always attacking the black man. The black man has all this pressure on his shoulders. 
I don't know what pressure you're talking about. All this that you speak about this black man is facing, I don't see it. I would be considered a black man myself. What are you talking about? The pressure, the responsibility. If you are a male, if you are a man, and you cannot handle real talk about your gender, this is not the place to be. If you are a female, and you think your daddy is a man and your grandpa is this great man. This is not the place to be. You need to leave. We want to have real talk about masculinity. We talk about masculinity. We talk about manhood. But do we actually understand what that is? Do we know? We may have the same type of talk with the sisters one day. However, if this man can straighten up, if this man can really become a man, if this man truly understood his masculinity, then we really don't have to worry about too much because I am told that man follows God and woman follows man and children follow man and woman so if you straighten up the man because he has submit himself to do the will of god as they say or they would say during this uh holy month of ramadan then the woman is not a real problem because she would just follow in turn if you don't want to hear the reality about our agenda, this is not the place to be. It is time for you to leave. This is not your cup of tea. Go somewhere where they can tell you you are God, you are a prince and you are a king, and you are a warrior, and all the lies that they tell you. Go where your ego can be stroked. I'm not going to stroke a damn thing. I'm not going to give you credit. I'm not going to give us credit unless we earn it. Unless we earn it. Parental discretion is advised. I want to send a shout out and I always forget but this broadcast is Samuel, Samuel Cast on Facebook and I don't want to forget it, and I don't want to ignore my Facebook brothers and sisters and listeners on Facebook. Shout out to Facebook. I'm not going to keep us long. I just want to get straight and make some points and get out of here. Let me acknowledge these comments real quick. Brother Robert said, they have ter <laughs> they terminated Brother Ben X channel again. Mm, mm, mm. That is really whack. <laughs> what? I don't understand. What do Brother Ben say where he deserves to keep getting terminated? I don't. I don't understand. I truly think that it might be his own people behind his termination, but that's my own thing. That's a belief. Shout out to Brother Ben X. That's not going to stop him from, from doing what he wants to do. And he will 
probably make another YouTube channel and just keep trucking. That's just how it goes. Again, shout out to our Facebook family. And parental discretion is advised. Shout out to Brother Talib, is in the chat room. Thank you, Brother Talib, for joining us these few minutes. We just want to make a few comments and get out of here. Parental discretion is advised. Men or women, you can't handle real talk about black men. You need to leave because I know I hurt feelings. Sometimes feelings need to get hurt. Oh, I didn't, I didn't really read the comment. Let me see this. Brother Robert says, we need reparations to be real men and real women again. <laughs> well, Brother Robert, <clears throat> Brother Robert, I guess we'll never be real men and real women in this nation. They have no intention and made it very clear. No time soon. <laughs> they're going to give you give us <laughs> reparations so and if you're saying that we need reparations to be real men and real women you're saying that we're not real men and we're not real women right now that's sad <laughs> and we want to talk about this that's sad that we need money you need money you need reparations in order to feel like a man or a woman. Wow. I don't need money from the children of my oppressor to be a man. You should not need money from the children of your oppressor to feel like a woman. <laughs> See, we want to talk about that. <clears throat> Are you ready to, to get on the soul train? Woo woo, woo woo. <laughs> what brings us to this topic, there was a Facebook post, speaking of Facebook. There was a Facebook post and the brother or the message that the brother was sending, the Facebook post, he was talking about erectile dysfunction. And what he was saying about erectile dysfunction is true. There are many of us, men, and even younger people nowadays are suffering from something called erectile dysfunction. And he was saying that we're missing so much uh, the, the, the pleasure of, of sex and, and you don't feel like a man because your, your wiener don't work. Your wiener don't work. <laughs> Wow, you know, very, it's very, very important. So Brother Robert says, without money, without reparations from your oppressor, you can't feel like a man. And the brother said, when your ding a don't work, you definitely don't feel like a man. You don't have nothing to swing around. <laughs> So you don't feel, you don't feel like a man. 
because you don't have no money. <laughs> you don't feel like a man because you don't have any money. And you don't feel like a man because your dang a lang don't swing. All right. <clears throat> now, I have spoken on this subject a few times. Many of you know my position and you know where I stand on uh, a lot of this, on this topic. And some have come to the conclusion, oh, that, that Negro hates sex. He's a sex hater. <laughs> if I talk about Muslims, I hate Muslims. If I talk about Christians, I hate Christians. If I talk about dogs, I, I hate dogs. Everything I talk about, I hate. So I, I talk about sex, I hate sex. Silly, silly folks. This is the problem. The problem for me, when we talk about sex, is that this people is already hypersexualized. There are those who will come to check out this video simply based on the fact that I put penis in the title. Oh, he talked about sex. Might be something nasty. Ooh, wow, I want to hear that. We're hypersexualized. And because of our hyper-sexualization, is that a word? You can't get nothing done because your mind is more focused on your penis, more focused on your vagina than actually accomplish something in order to progress yourself as a people. That's the problem I have. You are so hypersexualized that you don't see a woman for who she is. She's just booty and titties and legs, ass. She's not a human being. You don't treat the woman as a human being. And what is so sad? Within the last few generations, and I noticed this growing up, women now take on the behavior of corrupt men. And now women want to go to the strip club and see men slide up and down poles and sling their dinglings around and look up at their butt cheeks. Women want to do the same thing that men do. So here you are. We have two human beings that don't view each other as human, but some kind of sex object, some kind of low life form. This should be a problem for us all because the man is not human and the woman is not human. So if the man and the woman are not human, then the children you produce are not human. Why you wanna talk about erectile dysfunction? That's the least of your problem. All the problems that we have in this society, who gives a damn about whether your ding a -ling work or not? Who gives a damn? Why is that a priority to you? That's a priority to you because that's the only thing that makes you feel like a man. Using your ding a -ling and making children, you have nothing else to feel like a man. That's why. You have not progressed and you have moved no more forward than our ancestors 
who had no choice and was forced to be hypersexualized. But you're free. Mm. So look at this. So the brother says, let me see if I can remember exactly what he, he said. Oh, well, basically he's, he's saying, if your dangling don't work, you don't feel like a man. Let, let's study this real quick. Let's go back in time. Let's go back in time. We're in slavery with our ancestors. The brother says, if your dangling don't work, you don't feel like a man. That's all. You ain't mentioning nothing else. I, I got the, my dangling. This has got to work. Otherwise, I, I don't feel like a man. So we go to slavery. Now, you are the historians. Y'all are the scholars. Where was erectile dysfunction among the slaves? Do any of you have, put, up, put a link in the chat room. We want to know the erectile dysfunction during slavery. It probably was a subject that not, they didn't even talk about. But uh, clearly, the, the penis of the slave must work because he kept the plantation filled with babies. He was a breeder. You can't be a breeder if your ding -a -ling don't work. So his ding -a -ling, his penis work. You say that in order for me to feel like a man, my ding -a -ling, my penis must work. Where his ding -a -ling work? Was he a man? His ding -a -ling work? Making a lot of babies for the slave master. Is he, was he a man? No, he was not called a man. He was called a slave. He was called somebody's property. He was not a man. His ding -a -ling worked. Matter of fact, another man, another man owned his penis and told him how to use it. Was that male slave a man? His penis worked. Just because your penis work don't make you a man. It's pitiful and it's pathetic and it's shameful when you believe that if your penis does not work, you're not a man or you need some money. Is that all it is to manhood? You got to have money in your pocket and your dang dang got to work. What did the slave do? The slave worked his ass off in the field for somebody else. The slave master made him kill himself. He would take this male who dingling work and the other one who dingling work, put them and forced them to fight each other to the death. And then one would be murdered, one would be killed, and his dangling would stop working. What, it, what else is it about the slave male? All his needs was met by another man by the slave master. If you're a man, because 
Your dingle ain't work, so that makes you a man. Why do you need, why are you fighting and killing each other? Why is another man taking care of you if you're a man simply because your, your penis work? There was a book that they made into a movie that described this scenario, this behavior. It was called, it was called Mandingo. A wonderful classic movie. Those of you who have not seen this movie, this is a must see. This is a must see Mandingo. Mandingo was a killer of his own gender and he was a breeder. And the master, the master figure, he make good babies if he can fight and kill all the slaves like that. He's all strong or whatever. He must have strong DNA. So he also was a breeder. Like some of y'all, some of you are like that. Strong, muscular. Brag about your ding -a -ling. When you meet somebody, you make sure that you sit away so they can see that buzz between. <laughs> make sure people can see that buzz between your legs. Yeah. I know I got it going on. A man dingo. Because what make him a man, what give him value is his penis. What give him value is his strength. And another man control your strength. Another man control your penis. You are his property. So being a breeder, being a mandingo, and you making all these babies, you don't have to take care of them. The only thing you have to do is run around and just sex yourself up, just a breeder. I'm tired of, and I'm sick and tired of always blaming things and our behaviors on slavery. Well, the reason why we do this, cause of slavery. And the reason why you do that, cause of slavery. And you know it's in our DNA, uh, and, and, and that's the reason why. Bullshit. Parental discretion is advised. I, I, I want to say that. That's bullshit. How long has it been since we been in chains, had a slave master? No, you do that because... You do things because you want to do it. You, just like the brother said, pleasure, you pleasure seekers. You won't put it at, you won't put it time for the pleasure. And that's what he said in, in the post. You pleasure seekers. You smoke weed. Whew. You smoke weed for the pleasure. You pleasure seekers. You watch countless, they say black people watch more TV than anybody because it's entertaining. It gives you pleasure. It takes you into fantasy world. It, it makes it so that you can forget your problems. That's what it does. And you get drunk and you do illegal drugs, and you chase the putty tat, and you chase the ding -a -ling. pleasure seekers. But you're a man. Now nature, 
Nature uses pleasure to entrap you so that you'll chase the putty tag so that you can bring baby into the world so that you can reproduce. Just like flowers use nectar to attract the bees for reproduction. For reproduction. If it was not for sex, if it was not for pleasure, I would not be here to talk to you this afternoon. Sex is natural. There's no reason for me to hate sex. <laughs> There's no reason for that. That's not our problem. The problem is you call yourself a man and you don't want to accept the responsibility for your actions because of sex. That's the problem. You're not on a slave plantation no more. You're not the mandingo of the plantation no more. You want pleasure? You want sex? You want to feel like a man? Then you have to accept the responsibility of being a man. But the only thing you want is the pleasure. And see, you think because I got a job, I take care of my, I take care of my kids. I take care of my household. I, I, I'm a man. It's a whole lot more that goes to that that you have not even gotten close to. But you want to be treated like a full functioning man. You want to be treated like the man or like the male animal that is actually doing their job. The mandingo is nothing but a sex object. The mandingo has a penis and he's just a breeder. And if you look at us in this society, that's all we have become is mandingos. And another and another man is still taking care of your ass. Take it or let it alone. I don't give a damn if you have your own business. I don't give a damn how, how, how you look at it. Having your own business, you still don't have your own. You don't control no resources. Another man tell you if you can or cannot have a business. You got to go to another man to get a business license. You got to pay that other man taxes. And then he will use his police department that you pay taxes to. And they'll blow your brains out. And the only thing you can do is cry. What kind of man are you? And you worried about your damn penis. Enjoy the pleasure. Enjoy feeling like a man because your penis work, but also at the same time, you and I have to accept the responsibility for what our penis creates. Did you hear what I said? We have to accept responsibility for what our penis creates. If you really was accepting the responsibility for what you do with your penis, you probably would be happy it don't work. Because in order to take care of the business of what your penis has produced is a lot of responsibility. 
many of these men don't take care of their children. All over the internet, they talking about child support, child support. You made children. Why do somebody have to make you pay child support? These are mandingos. These are, and some of these men claim to be good men. There should not be a child support system. As a man, you should be happy to take care of what your penis produced. You laid up and you enjoyed the pleasure. That child is a consequence. That woman is a consequence. And they need stuff. They need food, clothing, and shelter. They need protection. But you are a mandingo. Another man give your child food, clothing, and shelter and protection. You on the Facebook talk about my dingling don't work. The problems of my dingling. What the problem of children that you bring into this world that don't have a home, don't know where their meal is coming from. These are the things. What about these women in shelters? These women becoming a part of the sex trafficking system and the welfare system. You're supposed to be a man. Well, I take care of my family. Do you? You produce food, clothing, and shelter. That means you have resources. That means you control water, you control electricity, you control uh, um, gas, all the necessities of life, which is a lie. You might run your business. You don't make paper. You don't control. You don't have. You don't make gas for your car. All these things, you still depend on another man to take care of you, because you are a mandingo, and you are still on the slave plantation, and you need another man to take care of you and your children. And he could take you, take your women, just like in slavery. The slave master could take your woman anytime he feel like. So we know that the mandingo is not a man. So when they set our ancestors free, he was a slave. Just because. He's not on the slave plantation. What make you think all of a sudden, oh, now I's a man now. What make you a man? What our ancestors did when they became free, so-called free, they copied the behaviors of the slave master. That's what they done. And they use as a guide the Bible that the slave master gave to them in order to try to teach them what is it to be a man? Oh, that you've been you've been a man dingo for over 300 years. What the hell do a man all think a man dingo know how to do? You know, take out the old rubber ducky. Yeah, yeah. You know, breed and work out in the field. What the hell do, do somebody who's been in the slave field for 300 years, what the hell do you know about being some man? And you only been off the slave field a little over 100 years right now to this day. You've been, you've been more 
of a slave, then you are so-called free. One of the things that a man is supposed to do or what males do, you have to acquire resources to take care of the things that your penis creates. Your children need food, clothing, and shelter, and you need to have those resources. No other man should control your water, your electricity, your gas, and all the things that your family need in order to survive. Even male animals are not going to do that. In nature, what you see in, uh, in male animals, they get, they get territory. And that territory has to be big enough to provide for his family, for his tribe or whatever you want to call it. In the territory, there's water, there's sufficient food, there's enough room, everything that this male needs for his family. No other male controls that. He don't have to go to a male robin, a male tiger, a male crocodile. I don't have to go to another crocodile, male crocodile talking about uh, will you let me do this? Uh, can I have a business license? Do I have to pay you taxes? That's you. And you don't mind doing that because you're a mandingo. You're not a full functioning male. There's no, no, you always compare yourself to other people. What a Mexican man, they, they, they come here and, and, and the Ukrainian guys come here and the Afghanistan, they do that voluntarily. And when they come here, they're gonna put their tail between their legs and bow down to the dominant male that's here. They can always take their happy ass back to where they come from. Ukrainian men right now are fighting Russia to defend what their penis produce. That's what it's about. Land resources, a nation to, to, to produce, to, to give your children food, clothing, and shelter. And now they must defend what, they have, what their penis has built. That's what's going on in Ukraine. That's what's going on out in the forest among the birds and the squirrels and the skunks, males territory. So when another male crosses the line, the male jumps up, hey, wait, a no, 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 no. You need to roll out. It ain't happening. Because I gotta take care of my, I gotta take care of what my penis produce. I got to defend my DNA. Y'all always talking about DNA and all that kind of good stuff. I got to defend my DNA. We don't even have the sense of a bird. Female birds, male birds come. And the male bird must build a nest or they both build a nest. A nest must be built before you can lay eggs. This is what we do. We have built nothing, don't want nothing. We act like the cuckoo bird. And we are a little cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. The cuckoo bird lays its eggs in the nest of another bird. And that's what we do, Mr. Strong dingling functioning male. That's what we do. We lay our eggs in the house 
of another people that you know don't like you. And you don't have no problem with that. And they feed you. They give you food, clothing, and shelter to take care of your happy ass. Just like the bird will take care of the, of the baby bird of the cuckoo that lay that egg in their nest. The, when the baby cuckoo bird is born, it throws the babies of the, of the, of the breeding parents, throws them out the nest and the parents take care of this alien baby. I wish we could learn that from the cuckoo bird. That's that's real smart. We don't do that. We become food for the babies of our oppressor. We become and we are with your man ass. We're nothing but what they call that. We're feeder fish in the aquarium. We have the same behavior as feeder fish. How many of you raise aquarium fish? How many of you have raised certain animals? And they don't eat, they don't eat um, cornmeal and all these, these different uh boxed up, whatever. You have to feed them like snakes. You have to feed them live mice, feeder mice, feeder fish, feeder rats. And that's what we are. And when you look at a, at a rat or a feeder fish, they, they in the aquarium, they in the cage and act like nothing's happening. The rat is just going around, just being a rat, looking for cheese or whatever. And the snake is just waiting till it get hungry and eat the rat. The bigger fish in the aquarium, just waiting till they get hungry so they can eat a fish. But in the meantime, the feeder fish, they're just swimming around in the rats. They're just walking around like it's normal. They're just trying to live their life. That's how the so-called Negro in America, that's how we behave. We are in America, swimming around like nothing's happening, like everything is normal. There's no threat. Then you wanna cry when a cop blow your brains out. You wanna cry because of job discrimination, which has never gone nowhere. Housing discrimination, which has never gone Nowhere. You living in a corner, your feet are fish. We behave this way because we have no men. You have a mandingo because a man has to get his children and his woman out of the danger zone. That man must get territory of his own that he control. He must be able to create food, clothing, and shelter, electricity, gas, whatever his, his family need. We have failed, and you worried about elect, uh, erectile dysfunction. That's the least of your worry. You made this. You want the children. You want the putty tag. Putty tag comes with a price. There used to be an old song where the woman says, there's no romance without finance. But see, she, she's, wrong. she's wrong because she still end up losing because you got the money, but you still don't have a man. He got a hard ding -a -ling, slinging around, he giving you money, but he cannot protect you. He, he cannot give you food, clothing, and shelter. 
He could show no territory. Look at here. So you produce babies and we produce these children. There's two different kinds of offspring that you can produce. <laughs> Low quality offspring and high quality offspring. When you're talking about low quality offspring, usually that comes from animals that don't live very long. They, they breed fast because they are on the menu of other animals, like frogs. A lot of animals eat frogs. So they breed, they don't live that long. They breed quick, make a whole lot of frogs because they're not gonna make it. Rabbits. Rabbits breed a lot, roaches. Because they don't live that long and a lot of things gonna eat them. They are prey animals. So there's no real there's no real need to have high quality offspring because a lot of them are going to go to waste anyway. Maybe that's your strategy. You want your dingling to work and you think make make as many babies as you can and so that's how you're going to win by outbreak you're going to outbreed everybody. You're going to outbreed the Mexicans. You're going to outbreed the white people. You're going to outbreed everybody. Mandingo ass. That's your strategy. The strategy of frogs and rabbits. Then we have high quality offspring. Like what we have in elephants and whales. Now to my knowledge. Elephants and whales, it takes longer than nine months for them to have a baby. And when the babies are born, they put a lot of effort and time into the baby because it's about quality. It's not about quantity. With low quality, low quality babies, it's about quantity. With high quality babies, it's about quality, not how many. Because these animals live a very long time. And these babies have to be able to learn a lot of things. So when it's their turn to be leaders in the, in the family, they got all this knowledge that they have gained. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Parental discretion is advised. I don't think I'm doing too bad, but I wanted to put that up because of the subject matter. Parental discretion, discretion is advised. You show me any black man. You control water, gas, electricity, the things that your family that we need. You are under the domination of another man and the only thing you care about whether or not your penis work. Your children and your wife know who, who, mm -mm -mm. your wife and your children know who the real man in charge is. They look up to you and they make you feel good. Oh, you're such a great daddy. Oh, you're such a great father. And really they lie to you. It's, it's, a, it's lies, it's, it's not real. Because you have nothing to do with the electricity. You have nothing to do with the water. 
or the internet and all the things, the, the shoes, the food. Some of y'all got a little, got a little, a, a little, these little baby gardens in, in the back. You feed yourself a little bit. It does nothing for the 40 million. Your penis, your penis has produced over 40 million black people in this country. Your little backyard gardens cannot feed us. And you still don't make gas. You don't make electricity. You don't make gas for your car. You don't make shoes put on your, on your feet. Winter coats. Underwear. You need to make some damn condoms and control your crazy ass self. You don't even have to make all these babies. There's condoms and all kinds of birth control. A vasectomy. Because you don't want the responsibility for having a woman. Having a woman is responsibility. Having children is responsibility. But you're a damn mandingo and you don't understand the concepts of manhood. That's one of the reasons why I did everything I could personally to avoid making babies because I know I don't want that responsibility. There's nothing fun about taking care of somebody like that, having that type of responsibility over for another human being. I love my children. I, I shows love my, you hear that all the time. I love my children. I, I, I love my children. I love my children. You love your children and you have no resources for them. You have not made a nest for them to live in. Another man is doing for them. And you know it and I know it. You worried about your dealing. You have no honor. You have no integrity. You have no character. You're not a man. You're a man dingo. So you don't feel like a man unless you ding lang work because you have nothing else to give you, to make you have value. That's a shame. That's a shame. Even in the animal kingdom, you have to be a leader. We have to provide and we have to protect your priorities is all messed up. And the women support you being a damn loser because they don't know any better. He make me happy. He buy me some clothes and some perfume. Perfume, I smell good. But he could, all those things, you don't control. You drive a car. You don't make no you don't make any cars. You don't build no roads. You love to run your damn mouth on the cell phone. You don't make no cell phones. Mr. Man. Everything you are is because of another man. Then you want to turn around and talk about Ain't no white man superior to me. Ain't nobody superior to me. Ain't no such thing as white supremacy. But your happy ass, your, your ass is dependent on the people that you talk about, that you, that you claim that is not superior to you. If, if foreigners, if this foreign male If this foreign male took everything and wouldn't sell us nothing and give us a damn thing, what would you have? 
Mr. Mr. Sling a dingling man. What will we have? With your, I'm in business for myself. What, what would you have? That makes you feel better when you, I'm in business for myself. I grow my own, I'll grow my own food. You, you know, your little little garden that you that you got. That that can barely feed you. Whoops. <laughs> That's not what I but look. And it's more than Exactly, a wannabe businessman. You don't, we don't do nothing. So, if it was just a few of us that thought like the Mandingo, it wouldn't really be a problem. But we have a whole the majority of us, we think Mandingo. You want all this pleasure and you want the honor, but you don't want to, the responsibility for being a man. This white man or Mexicans or Chinese all over the world they have accepted responsibility for what their penis do. And that's what it's all about. I got to get mine. Tupac, it was Tupac and it was another brother. I forgot their brother's name. But Tupac had a, a record. I got to get mine. You got to get yours. I got to get mine. I got to get yours. I got to get mine. It's not about sharing. We can trade. I grow corn. You got tomatoes. I trade my corn with your tomatoes. We could do that, but don't cut. This is mine. Don't cross the line. This is my water. This is my nuclear power plant. These are my roads. Don't cross the line. You're gonna have a problem. But we as black men. We have no line to cross because we built nothing. Mandingo behavior. In, in America, there's no manhood training for us. We just, we just going on what we think a man's supposed to be. What is manhood training? Manhood training, first of all, you don't have to be trained to be a man. We already know. We already know, and it's natural. You should know what, what it is to be a male. You should not have to be trained about that. Manhood training is taking a hood over the man to give instructions to the male, womanhood, to give instructions to the woman, what is expected of us, our role in society. That's what it is. Men and women in the United States, we have no manhood training. We just out here doing whatever we want to do, screwing around and, and hope for the best. And you and America is a good example of low quality human beings because there's no manhood training. There's no guidance except the Bible and maybe the Quran, that type of thing, maybe. And so since, since there's no manhood training, the penis produce low quality human beings, liars, 
mentally disturbed, drug addicts, murderers, pedophiles, and the list goes on and on. Because there's no manhood training. There's no guidance. There's no instructions. Do whatever you feel you want to do. This is the society that we live in. Do whatever you want to do. And now we suffer the consequences for doing what we all want to do. Porn stars, prostitutes. This is what the penis has produced in the United States because there's no manhood training. Do you know in primitive societies, you have to go through manhood and womanhood training. If you cannot cut the mustard, you cannot produce children. You have to show as a male in the society, you have to show that you can provide, protect, defend, all those things that's required. If you cannot do that, you cannot marry, you cannot produce children. Simple as that. In America, you have people that say out of their mouth, I don't like kids. But they start, but they spitting them out. If you don't like children, why are you why are you breeding? Why are you spitting children out? But you can do that in America. There are many people in America are not fit parents. And they know it. But you, you slanging, slanging your, your dingling, opening up your legs, producing children, and you well, damn. And they would some of these parents will even tell you, well, you you, you hear. It. Don't even like children. It takes special people to love children. And many of you don't even like children like that and making babies. And then you tell them, well, you're here now. You're here now, and I love you. You're th what kind of stuff is that? Well, you're here now. I'm going to love you because you're here. But you really didn't want me. And we wonder, and we act like we surprised the, the kind of condition and environment that we that we live in. We are not full functioning men. Talking about sex is a good topic. Erectile dysfunction is a good topic. You will not hear me talking on those type of things, because I know our people are hypersexualized. Look what we went through last year during the purge. Angel Snub Nub Seven, uh, uh, erectile dysfunction. His dingling don't work, and people laughing and giggling. <laughs> what do they have to do with anything? You had a woman on her channel talk about how tight her putty tat is and and who she give it who what does this have to do with anything? But see, since we don't and have not taken responsibility for ourselves, we can spend time on such nonsense. Because you don't control resources. You don't, yeah, right. And you know, chemically castrated, all that bull crap. 
You don't control resources. You don't make any laws. You just here. You just a Mandingo man and a Mandingo woman doing your Mandingo thing. So you have time for all this nonsense. And Masa is taking care of everything. This is why we don't have a care in the world. Even in the so-called black conscious community, here we are. You have a situation that could mess around and kick off World War III. Besides me, I don't think nobody else, the black and the black folks are not talking about it. Why aren't you talking about World War III? They're not talking about inflation. They're not talking about these things because because Masa gonna take care of everything. I don't have to talk about, I don't have to talk about inflation. I don't have to talk about gas prices. I don't have to talk about the war in Ukraine. I don't have to talk about. They talk about Africa. What you talking about Africa for? Because another man is controlling Africa. Africans don't control Africa. Europeans control Africa. Those people are nothing but. European Africans. The national languages are European. The new buildings that they are building are European. Ain't nothing special about them. They have resources. No. They have resources and don't control a damn thing. They are more pitiful than you are. <laughs> they are more pitiful than you are. Because they have resources and still don't control nothing. The only thing they can do is fight amongst each other. Like we do. Here in America. They concentrating on hating and fighting each other. And foreigners, alien men could come in to their nest and do whatever the hell they feel like they want to do. And you want me to be like them and something special about them. And you know there's nothing special about them. I see these Pan-Africans and all these pro-black people always. Oh, those Africans shouldn't do that. Those people are making Europeans and Chinese and other people kings and queens. And you so obsessed, they're booty lickers. Those people don't give a damn about you and me. That's why I say that we need to find a way to get our own. And that's why on this platform, we promote and we continue to push what we call Operation Exodus Mississippi Campaign. If you implement, if you accomplish this, you will have all the things that put you into a category outside of Mandingo because you will control water. You will control your defense. You will control your electric and gas and you will become a lawmaker other men will respect you. When you come here, damn it, you're going to respect me because I'm a man. I don't have to put a sign on my neck talking about I'm a man. You're going to know it because I whooped your ass. Don't play with me. And I don't give a damn about the federal government. I don't give a damn about nobody. Don't come here with your bull crap. The federal government is going to respect me and all your other bastards are going to respect me. You finally raise yourself up out of Mandingo hood. They, these people are tripping off the name. I don't go to Mississippi. You're not listening to what we're saying here. But that's because you are a mandingo and you're happy not having responsibility 
because being a real man is hard work. You don't want to work hard. Being a real full functioning man, men and women is a lot of work, a lot of sacrifice, and it's not any, it's not a joke. But being a Mandingo man and a Mandingo woman, that's easy. You, you've been doing that for over 100 years. No big deal. And if you get a little celebrity, get a little money in your pocket, and it's no big deal. You Happy, happy, joy, joy. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Look at Will Smith. All that money and status that he has. They can take his little funky Oscar away from him. No big deal. Everything Will Smith, Denzel Washington, Oprah Winfrey, all the Beyonce and Jay-Z, these people could take all that away from them. It don't mean nothing. Because they don't control a damn thing. Another man allow you to be a movie star and a talk show host. Just like your slave massa let you be whatever. Give you some extra biscuits on your plate. That's all it is. Denzel Washington and Oprah and Jada just have extra biscuits on their plates. They're nothing but Mandingo slaves. And you, you going to tell me, as men, I'm supposed to be satisfied with that? You satisfied? I take care of my family. No, you don't. When it's all said and done, another man takes care of us. With your made in China shirt on. while you making videos on YouTube and Facebook. These suckers won't even support a black YouTube or a black Facebook. You won't even support it. I'm a man. You're a man lie. I'm a woman. You're a woman lie. This is why they don't like Angel Snuffin' Up 7. Because I won't let you pretend to be a damn thing. Because I know. It, it hurts. But that's just the reality of it. If I can't play basketball, I cannot play basketball. No matter how hard I try. There are, there are people, black people, black men and women, who cannot play basketball. There are black men and women who cannot dance, they don't have rhythm. Contrary to, to popular belief, there are black people that can't play basketball, who don't like chicken and watermelon, and they, they can't dance. It is what it is. We do not qualify to be called men, full functioning men and women. You only qualify because you have a penis and a vagina. But you're not full functioning men and women. The purpose of Operation Essence Mississippi campaign is to put us on that path so we can become real men and women. So that we can break this behavior, this mindset of the Mandingo. Everything is about your vagina. Everything is about your penis. Are you serious? Why are adult men and women, you, you've had sex I don't know how many times, you, you have a vagina, you got a penis, why are you chipping off a vagina and penis? Your vagina do not have a brain. Your penis do not have a brain. Why are y'all chipping off what's between your legs? I don't get, I, I don't get that. 
because you're not thinking. You're thinking with the wrong head. The head between your legs instead of the head on your shoulders. And that's what we do here. We think with the head on our shoulders not the head between our legs. Because you keep following that head between your legs, it keeps you in trouble. Brother Talib says, while the pro-blacks still focus on arguing and threatening each other, we witnessing the actual possible coming of World War III. And it might not happen now. But I'm not a prophet. Something is going to kick, kick, kick this whole thing off. A worldwide drought. You will see how people really feel about each other if there's a worldwide drought and people can't get water the way you, you can't take a shower the way you used to. Matter of fact, you can't even drink water the way you used to. People fighting over water. Your money don't mean nothing. Your Bitcoin and your cryptocurrency and your gold and your silver, all the all that stuff that you hoarded, you can't drink that. Operation Exodus Mississippi campaign. We're thinking about what could happen, the worst scenario. Like these, or what they call those people, those doom, doomsday prepper type people. Trying to look out for you. Because you can't trip on the now. You got to trip on what might happen. It could rain today. And it might not rain to six months later. Are you ready? Now, you don't know that the rain is coming six months later. Because you're not used to that. Are you ready for six months of no rain? Which is going to kill all your vegetables out in the garden? Vegetarians? Are you ready? That's the purpose of being an adult. An adult has to look toward the future. And prepare the babies for the worst possible scenario so that they can survive, so they can live. You're not gonna be without water or if there's a nuclear disaster and there's radiation everywhere, you're not gonna be thinking about your erectile dysfunction. You're not gonna be thinking about no putty tag. You're gonna be thinking about survival. How am I gonna live? And you should be thinking about those things while things are well. Because it's hella trying to do something once you are in that situation. That's how adults think. But we're not dealing with adults. You're dealing with, with mandingos. You're dealing with people. Uh, don't worry. Don't listen to that guy. God, God's going to handle it. Why do you think God is talking through, through me? God is trying to tell you something. Remember that song? God is trying God is trying to tell you something. So you can claim to be a full functioning man. You can claim to be a man all you want. You're not going to be that here cuz we know we don't qualify. Do it make me feel good to say that? No. It's the reality. It is what it is. The only thing we could do from this moment on is try to do better, do the best we can. Now that we know. Now that somebody has told us the real truth. Let's get on the soul train and let's build something for real. And the best strategy, the best solution in order to get back into the game, to become competitive with other people, 
in this country and around the earth, our best bet is to implement something like what we call the Mississippi campaign. And we can clarify things and we can talk about it. It's the only, it's the only solution. I have not, I have not seen no better vision, no better purpose, no better plan. I, I have not seen it. If it exists, please let me know about it. Nothing is easy. It's gonna take sacrifice. It's gonna be, it's gonna take suffering. Maybe. Maybe lives would be lost. But when you're an adult, you expect that. You expect those things. So earlier, brothers say, we need reparations. Don't get reparations. We're not a real man and a real woman. So we don't have reparations. So we're not we're not real men and women, according to what he just said. And on the post, the post on Facebook told me, if my dangling don't work, I'm not a man. So if you broke and your dangling don't work, you're not a man. A lot of us are not men. But the ones who say those things. They're not men either. Because as a male, you must control territory. You must be able to give your family, your children, those things so they can survive the necessities of life. And if we want to live this modern life, it requires gas, internet access, electricity, and so forth and so forth you know and you're not we're not providing none of it not even one percent of those things so you keep your wife and your children keep looking up to the white man and other people for the for the necessities of life you feel you feel good about that i don't feel good about that i don't like it so don't put me, don't put me in the category with these other folks. Because I don't like that. I will want my wife and children look up to me. Look what my man have done. Look what my daddy, look what my father have done. I'm not talking about your little indi individual family. And you still depend on the white man. Made in Taiwan, made in Korea, made in Israel, made, made everywhere except out of your, out of your factories. I'm not here to hurt our feelings. I'm not here to be negative. But we have to keep it real. Because reality the truth is better for us in the long run. Look at, look at the condition that we're in right now because we don't accept reality. We, we can't handle the truth. Do you like it? Don't get angry at me. Get angry at, your, at yourself. We don't have to be losers. We can be winners. We have that potential. I don't know if we have the time because time waits for no one. And if time runs out, you have to suffer the consequences of your choices, whether those choices are bad or whether they are good. I would hope before time expires that we would make better choices. So on that note, 
I appreciate you for joining us this afternoon. And we did put up the notice. Parental discretion is advised. I did put that up. So, uh, I don't think I did too bad. I, I didn't want to get too nasty, but just in case, got a little rowdy. I wanted to put that uh, up there. Parental discretion is advised. I want to thank everybody in the chat room. I want to send a shout out to Facebook. I always forget my Facebook people. I have not forgotten you today. Thank you, Facebook, for joining us this uh this afternoon, the super MVPs, Deacons of Reality, Mellow Cap, and uh, Brother Epps joined us in the chat room. Brother Talil, thank you so much. Those who are listening and those who will be listening to this broadcast later on, um, everything that we are, if you want to donate or you want to, are you interested in my autobiography, those things are the links are in the description box. I appreciate it. If you want to want to know more about Operation Exodus Mississippi campaign, uh, you can always email me. You can also visit Operation Exodus Mississippi campaign on Facebook and watch some of those videos. Um, hopefully in the future, we will have a uh, live stream just about just about the Mississippi campaign. People are tripping off the, the name of something and really don't understand where we're coming from. But if you listen to those videos, if you listen to Soul Liberation Day 2022 and the other Soul Liberation Days, you begin to understand where we're coming from. Shout out to our brother Denzel Rogers out there and Armand Delight and Sister Ann, and Angela Hines. Is that somebody else that I missed, our super MVPs? I noticed some of our people, some people was coming pretty often. I don't see them no more, but that's how it is. A lot of folks can't handle reality because that's, oh, Z-Man, of course, Z-Man. Got to, yeah, of course, Z-Man. Reality is difficult. It's easier to be ignorant. It's easy just to live in these fantasy worlds that we built for ourselves. I, I can't do it. Sometimes I wish I was like some of these people lost in some kind of fantasy world. I, I'd rather just accept the reality of things. It makes you stronger. That's why they can't do. That's why they can't do nothing with us, because we're keeping it real to the best of our ability. Your fantasy world is not going to stand up against reality, because it's it's an illusion, it's a facade. We're gonna keep it real here. So. If there aren't any um, questions or, or comments, I notice those trolls, when I ignore them, they don't want to come around. They only want to come around if you feed their crap. So they come around and I just, I don't say nothing. Don't acknowledge them at all. Okay. Um, Brother Robert says, why are they afraid to give us our reparations? Brother Robert, reparations is not a debt. They don't owe us nothing. Reparations is a gift from one person to another out of the kindness of their heart, trying to show 
that uh, some type of humanity and try to repair what they, the harm that they caused. They don't owe nobody nothing. These people, if they want to give our people reparations, they would have done it long, long time ago, way back after the Civil War. They're not interested in giving nobody any reparation. Now, there are little, to my knowledge, there are little towns and cities. I know there's a town in Illinois, and right here in the in the, in the St. Louis uh, area, they they are coming up with little little tiny things to show that. Uh, they want to make up or try to repair what was done by slavery. They want to pay some of these uh, black student debts off and pay some bills off or whatever. Some of these little towns, they are doing little things, but as far as the federal government is concerned, I, I don't think, especially in our lifetime, I don't think you will see that ever happening, especially when your government is still controlled like Tariq Nashi said, by the dominant society. And a lot of those Pekka Woods come from the Jim Crow era and, and whatever. They are still alive. They're not going to, they, people like Joe Biden, they're not going to give you, they ain't not going to give them, they ain't interested in no reparation. And then the next problem is if they ever do reparation, What form of reparations will it be? You don't want to give these people monetary reparations so they can go out and buy uh, cars and boats. And Reparations is supposed to be provided to try to help heal what you lost. You didn't lose no Cadillac. You didn't, you didn't lose no Louis Vuitton bag. That ain't what you lost. So if reparations ever was given, it has to be in a manner so the people can actually benefit, not go on a spinning spree like it's the price is right. Brother Talib says, Robert, they not afraid. They just giving us of giving us reparations and we ain't got the power to make them do it. That's another thing. They're not afraid. If I owe you reparations, make, make me pay you. We're not in a position to make a demand. But if we control a state like Mississippi, if we control a state like Mississippi, you put yourself in a position where now you got some clout. But if you control the state of Mississippi, that in itself, you created your own reparations, if you understand. You need to stop begging people. Who gives a damn? I ain't gonna ask these people for nothing. Be smart enough to take, take your crap, whether they like it or not. Robert says they give Jews. Those are Jews. You can't tell nobody what to do with their money. Well, you get, it, it, it reminds me when people are going in and out of jail and the judge give you 15 years to life and somebody else did the same thing, they got probation. <laughs> you, you, they don't care nothing about that. I'm giving you 15 years to life. They don't care nothing about it. It's on, a, it's on an individual basis. They don't care about that. But also at the same time, those Jewish people are united like that. The majority, not the minority, because of course you can't get you you can't get full full unity. But they have enough unity where they can, they got some stuff off, and they don't play they don't play games. And plus, they also have economic power. They control a whole lot of things and have a lot of influence. You don't have those things because we're Mandingo, like what we're talking about. Man, nobody respects a Mandingo. A 
Exactly. They don't have to give you nothing. But if you put yourself in a seat of power and influence, that changes the whole ball game. Who's going to get more respect? A bum on the street? Or you, you work a job every day and pay your bill. Who's gonna get them? Who's gonna get the most respect? You're gonna get more respect because you're a hardworking citizen and you're paying your bills and blah blah blah. Most people ignore the drunk on the street because that drunk on the street has no power, has no influence. I don't know if Talib want to say if, if Talib want to say a few words today. I could put the link in the uh, in the chat room real quick before we get out of here. Um, Robert says the money America is giving to Israel is our money. If it's your money, go take it then, Robert. <laughs> what you ain't though? No. <laughs> Robert says the money that America giving to Israel that's our money. We'll go get it. What you waiting on, Robert? For the return of, of, of uh, the mother plane or something? What you waiting on? Go get it. You says our money, go get it. If it's our money, tell us to go get it. Go get it. Joe Biden said, come, come get it. Yeah, yeah, you come come get it, Robert. Come, come get your money. <laughs> you dealing with gangsters. <laughs> You're dealing with gangsters. <laughs> let me put that uh let me put that link in the uh chat room. Let me see if Talib wanna if he wanna come by and just say a few words real quick. You can come by too, Robert. I just put the uh, link in the uh, chat room. You can come by and if Talib want to come by real quick before we call it a call it a day. I mean, if it's your money, go get it. <laughs> Robert still. Bob is still asking these questions. Who built the economy? We know all this. Brother Robert, we know all this. If it's your money, go get it, bro. <laughs> go get it. Joe Biden and all those other suckers is waiting on you. Come, come get it. It's simple as that. See, the Mississippi campaign, if you implemented the Mississippi campaign, you can get it whether they like it or not. But you don't understand that. You want to be a beggar. Please, Massa, can I have a biscuit, Massa? You know, I've been working real hard, Massa. I'm the one. That, that picked that wheat, Massa. I'm the one who, who made that flour, Massa. Still begging. Stop being a beggar. Use your brain. Use your brain and go get it, whether they like it or not. Be slick. I'll slick the slickster. I'll trick the trickster. Robert says, we are wounded people. We have been through what no other people have been through. They don't care. <laughs> Brother Robert, they don't care.
I put the link in the in the chat room. Uh, if you can't get in through the through the link, just just call me, and I can get you on the phone. To live. Is that what is that what they do in the nation of Islam? Did they teach you to, to cry like that? I don't remember. I, I, I don't remember. I don't remember crying about reparations when I was in the nation of Islam like that. Yeah. You know, you talk about it and, and, and keep keep it moving. I'm not gonna cry about it. We waiting on uh Talib. He said he wanna come here. If you can't get in, just call me. I'll put you on speakerphone. You can hit the link too, uh, Brother Robert. And you can come, you can come cry on my shoulders. <laughs> uh, peace to Brother Robert. <laughs> oh boy. Have you ever told the Jews to stop? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. I have told the Jews to stop crying. 19, they've been doing that thing. They've been doing that thing since 1948. Uh, why, why are the Jews still getting reparations? Like, damn, you can't do for yourselves? And you have your own nation since 1948? Come on. Yes, I have. And on top of that- All right, brother. Yeah, go ahead. Can you, can you hear me? All right, yeah. bro, I want to respond to this robber guy. First of all, uh, like we've been saying, if you want your reparations, you put yourself in a position of power. In Jews have that. We as so black people don't have that. That's the difference. Then another thing is, you can't tell nobody who to give reparations to and who not to. They ain't got to give you a goddamn thing. It's not a debt. Another thing is that, furthermore, them Jews were Europeans also. So Europeans worked that out amongst each other. Look, okay. Here we go. They told them Germans. So let's look out for them by giving them reparations and giving them which they took from the Palestinians just so they could have a land. You see what I'm saying? Yes. They circumstance they circumstances is is a whole different set of circumstances from ours. First of all, on that note, we were slaves here. Okay? We were slaves. That's a big difference between us and the situation that them Jews was under during Nazi Germany. Okay? We were slaves here in America. They ain't got to give you nothing. They barely gave you civil rights and then took <laughs> some of that back. Okay? Right. So... We got to put ourselves in a position by taking control of a state such as Mississippi, and then we could work. We'll be in a position, a better position to work toward commanding that type of stuff, not demanding, but commanding it. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, we ain't in no type of power position to call no shots at the table. That's why they told you we're not giving no rebel no reparations to you. It's not up for discussion. Get over it. Let it go. Unless you're going to whoop our ass and take it. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it don't get no plainer and simple than that. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, <laughs> it, 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 for those of you who 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 are uh, thinking the same way, like Robert is concerning these reparations? They didn't told you we're not giving you a damn thing. 
if then you got your own so-called black politicians in there, like Cory Booker and them, like Candace Owens and them, that's uh you know working with them, with the enemy, saying that look, <laughs> black people don't need reparations. <laughs> Condoleezza Rice said black people don't need reparations, and the list goes on. So when you got people in political uh, positions or certain positions that can help push with it saying we don't need it that even make it more harder exactly so i mean huh, what are you what are you talking about reparations we need to be taking control of some of this land where we can put ourselves in a position to do a whole lot even more than just trying to get some damn reparations <laughs> okay we got we got we got millions of millions of drug addicts uh, uh, and, and families that was destroyed by crack cocaine and drugs and alcohol. You know that 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 need more help, which is more important than some damn reparations quiet is kept. Because if you get if you give a, if a bunch of Negroes millions of billions of dollars of reparations. That's going to add on to the fuel of the fire or the crack cocaine and drug epidemic problem among us, too. Right. Like the brother said about buying Cadillacs, we'll be able to buy as much as more crack as we can to kill ourselves with. You see what I'm saying? So, I mean, let's be realistic about this situation, brother. <laughs> and stop playing these games. They not going to give us reparations unless we put ourselves in a position to take them reparations. And we not in a position to do that at this moment of time. Then, hey, that conversation is uh, like a broken record. Which has really been anyway, you know, but yes. but uh, I'm, I'm just that's all I just want to add in. In closing, brother, since uh, you know you you ain't got much time, I just what I just want to add in, and, and, and we need to get our fairy tale way of thinking. And like I said, also too, before I close, why we got these pro blacks on these YouTube channels, uh, arguing with each other about frivolous punk ass debates and uh <laughs> disagreements and all this other kind of stuff. Man, we on the brink of World War Three. You must have forgot. We on the brink of World War Three, and and if and if, and if uh, 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 Ukraine can't keep Russia's full fledged attack at bay like they trying to do right now, trust me, we could we could be in that space, and that's gonna be a very dark place for everybody throughout the planet Earth. Are you going to be prepared for that? Or are you going to still be arguing about who won the debate <laughs> and who didn't? Okay. I, I yield my mic. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know if you can see. I put that back on the screen. Brother Robert says, a lot of God said that we need reparations and who knows better than God? Oh, okay. Then well, if that's the case, then why in the hell is we in the in the in the condition that we in that we've been in for almost five hundred years as a people, then since God know better. That's that's a simple reply back to that. <laughs> Robert, Robert says, "Hold up, they can give us crack cocaine and drugs and not reparation, and you cool with that?" I, I you putting words in my mouth. I never said I was cool with them giving us no crack cocaine. I said that if they do give us reparations, many of us that's addicted to crack cocaine going to keep giving it back to them through spending it on drugs and other uh, unnecessary stuff. That's what I said. Now, uh, as far as, uh, you know, of course, they're going to give us crack cocaine because that's a part of the destruction, right? Mm -hmm. 
they ain't going to give us no money, something that we could use to turn that destruction around. And most of us ain't got sense enough to do that with money. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> yeah, I, I've known uh, Robert for a while. He's he's uh, He loves Minister Louis Farrakhan. Oh, okay. Okay. And I... Uh, I don't know why he hangs with Angel Snub Number no. Seven, but there, apparently there's something about Angel Snub Number no. Seven he still like, even though he doesn't like what I have to say about Nation of Islam, Minister Farrakhan, whatever. But but Robert Robert been around for a long time, <clears throat> but I cannot I cannot change my opinion or my position on Nation of Islam teachings or religion in general, but I will, I will respect him as a person. And that's the best that I can do. I cannot, uh, I cannot talk lightly on misinformation and those things I know that are detrimental. I have to challenge these beliefs. Uh, he knows that I don't acknowledge God here. Right. <laughs> he knows that. So I don't even know why he even brought that up. He knows I don't I don't we don't acknowledge God here. What God wants. Uh look at the situation your God is in. The nation of Islam God been around since the 1930s. This this the best you can do? Tell almost what God a, he wait a minute, he's been around almost a hundred years, right? Not Robert. <laughs> I'm no, no, I'm talking about Master Farad Muhammad, so they say. Right. <laughs> and, th and this is the best, this is the best situation that no mother plane has shown up to do anything, just a bunch of talk. No mother planes, no, no, no little, no little planes, no nothing special <laughs> to, to help the, the, the believers, nothing except talk. It's, it's nothing but talk, feel good rhetoric talk. And Joe Biden and all those people, they challenge Allah. Bring your Allah ass to the White House and get your reparations. So we're going to wait for Allah to go to the White House and get the reparations. They challenge Allah. Come on, Allah. Bring your, your yourself here and see what you get. So we don't do that here. We have to be smart enough to outsmart these people. You have to be slick enough to outslick the slickster and be smart enough to outtrick the trickster. That's the people you're dealing with because we, we're not in a position to outright fight them. We're not even in a position like Ukraine. We, we absolutely helpless. So we have to depend upon our brain over brawn. But they don't get it because they're not thinkers. They're not using their brain. But it's brain over brawn. We're not using our brain because it can be done. So if there was something else that you wanted to say, uh, Brother Talib. Uh, I, and and also, too, I want to uh, just go in uh, on, on the fact that um, the other night, I seen this uh, YouTube video. I was going to send it to you, mm -hmm. but uh, it was uh, this video they were showing about this ghetto neighborhood in Kampala, Uganda, over in Africa. And these pro-blacks are so obsessed with Africa, but yet, and I hear it all the time on their channels, they so obsessed with Africa, right? Mm -hmm. But would you go to them jungle ghetto parts of uh, Africa, like in Kampala, Uganda, or, or Lagos, Nigeria, or, or Nairobi, Kenya, where I'm talking about, they ghettos look 10 times worse as the ghettos or Watts or, or Harlem or, or, or Brownsville in Brooklyn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or, or the third ward in uh, Atlanta, you know? Or the ninth ward in New Orleans, you know what I'm saying? I mean, 
these ghettos in America ain't got nothing on them ghettos over there in Africa or, 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 or on the poverty look of them ghettos in Africa. But you so obsessed with Africa, well then how about why don't you go over there and join the brothers and sisters <laughs> in the ghetto? But but every time I look up, you got on your channels about they like like the African diaspora channel, you got nice lavish hotels, or uh, they offering people to go travel to in South Africa and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. No, go to Soweto, go to the black townships in South Africa where they really uh struggling if you that obsess with Africa. Join your brothers and sisters over there in the real struggle they in since mm -hmm. you so obsessed with Africa. Because I'm going to tell you, those people that got them hotels, them mansions, and them uh, European westernized looking skyscrapers in those cities over there don't even give a damn about their poor populations over there, okay? Mm -hmm. So you go over there and you join them. And that's part of the struggle. If you really are obsessed <laughs> with Africa. And to the end, don't nobody care to hear nothing about no damn Africa. <laughs> and them people try. And matter of fact, they interviewed some of them people in the videos. And all they asked them was when they asked them a the question about what other countries they like, they said they wanted to go to Canada, the United States, Germany, mm -hmm. and, and et cetera. And I'm like, wait a minute. Every time I look up, these people still talking about they want to go other places. But you want to run your ass over there, though, right? Man, be, be you, you know, be real. Mm -hmm. I mean, truly, be real about the situation. You ain't you ain't really trying. You ain't really about that life like you say you is. Far as being pro pan African and all that, <laughs> because that's what all come with it, too. The poverty over there, the starvation, the civil wars they having over there, the tribal wars they having over there, all that come with it. Yes. <laughs> so, I mean, you you know, you got enough problem on your hands here in America being dark skin than worrying about some damn Africa. Them people trying to come over here. Like I told uh, you brother one time, this sister uh, I know that go to the college at the school I go study at told me a few years ago on the bus. We was on our way home from school, leaving school, headed toward the local downtown area. And me and her were having a conversation and she said that. That, that, that she loved, she liked Nebraska more better than she liked Cameroon, West Africa, where she came from. Because it's more safer for her over here than it is over there. Mm. Whoa. that Y'all didn't hear that. I'm talking to the Pan-Africans. Yeah. Oh, y'all didn't hear that, right? Y'all got African talking about living in the United States or in a certain part of the United States where she feel most safe at than she feel over in Africa. But you want to run your butt over there to Africa, right? You want to get, you want to lead other people to go over there and get gypped by them African con artists like them Nigerians, right? That's what you, I mean, come on. Man, y'all got y'all priorities mixed up with that, for real. And, and, and uh, another thing, too, uh, you know, y'all really don't give a damn about Africa because most of the time y'all talk about Africa, y'all talk about their resources. Right. <laughs> That's another thing. Y'all don't really care about them people over there. Because if you did, you would care about the poor people over there. You, you know what I'm saying? When y'all yeah, go over there. Why don't y'all, y'all don't even talk about going over there to reach out to them leaders. Nope. You know, that's who y'all need. If y'all going to go over there, go over there and talk with them leaders about, uh, you know, setting aside us some land that we could go to over there. What we could uh, really fulfill our uh, promise toward real true liberation for once and for all. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. 
like they gave the uh, Jews Israel. Where you see them as your brothers and sisters in Africa, go over there and tell their leaders, give us some of that land. I bet nice. y'all ain't going to be able to do that. Try that and see how that work out. Right. Yeah, see how that work out. <laughs> yeah, but you know, y'all just want to get on there on social media, you know, and talk all this other bull crap that, that ain't leading us nowhere. But 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 often the more and more drama, more and more tiddly bit drama, you know, even to the point where now you're talking about each other's hair, <laughs> each other's each skin. Like I thought it was about bl black love, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, you too ugly and black. <laughs> oh, you too light skinned. Oh, oh, you your your shoes is raggedy. Yo, yo, your clothes is raggedy. Oh, my stuff is uh is is more 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 worth expensive, more expensive than yours. You sound like the common Negro in the streets with that type of conversation. Mm -hmm. That's what it sounds like to me, you know. Bunch of nigga talk. <laughs> exactly. You know, that's all it is. You know, and that's the reason why I don't entertain with that stuff on social media. I tried it a couple of times. I We recently tried it. Yes. But of course, because of the different page we own, that just didn't work out. No. You know, so, uh, I mean, but 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 the thing is, is this is that I I I, I could you 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 know I'm like this here. I could less care if we don't have no money, long as we can get plenty of food to eat every day, mm -hmm. enough clothes to be put on our back, and 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 housing and, sh and, and stuff, and where we could control some of this water, some of this oil. Mm -hmm. And this food that's grown, not this earth pavement, you understand me? That's the only thing I'm concerned about. Because like they say, when the nuclear, if the if a nuclear war happens, your bit, your your bitcoins, your silver, your gold, all that won't matter. None of that won't matter. Whatever uh other uh value which is considered currency. But you won't matter either. Because you can't eat that. That's right. Why that nuclear uh, radiation poisoning the whole entire earth. Including your food and water. Won't none of that other stuff matter. Because you can't eat that. You can't drink that. See. That's why the, the, the Asians is so uh, successful economically. Because, see, they think along them terms. You see a lot of them Asian immigrants over here like them Chinese and Koreans. You don't see a bunch of them, maybe a few of them in, within the minority among them. But the majority of them, you don't see them buying those lavish clothes. Mm -hmm. Hell, they make them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You don't see them dry, but buying them Jordans up and, like, and all that kind of stuff. Because they know the truth. They understand the true importance of economics. You know what I'm saying? And, and this is and this is why we as black people don't have nothing. You know? And like I even said in the uh, chat, you know, when somebody said, well, you're not a real man if you ain't a woman, if you ain't got reparations, first of all, uh, let me say this. Like I said before, people like your black, rich, and famous people like your Will Smiths that's getting caught up in the Oscars acting ignorant and stupid. <laughs> and and, and uh, your Jada Pick, your Jada Pickett Smiths, your Chris Rocks, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Your Floyd Mayweathers, your uh, LeBron James, the, the Williams uh, sisters that play tennis, uh, you know, uh, and these other people, even Bill Cosby, <laughs> you know, Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan, the list goes on, you mm -hmm. know. All of them are not men and women. Beyonce, Jay-Z, Kanye West, ain't none of them men and women. 
They not in no power and position to do nothing, not even with that money they got. Not even with that money they got. That's right, I said it. And I'm not hating either. I wish any soul brother or sister success in whatever they do in their own personal life. But the reality is, is that the money they got ain't doing, can't even do them no good. You know, because them white folks got the power where they could snatch that away from them. All they got to do is freeze their accounts yep. and every and accounts with every inch of their assets. What they going to do? Scream, cry, scratch, fight about it. <laughs> what they going to do? Ask your ancestors that's still around when they was living back during the 1930s depression in this country. When them white folks froze their accounts and they couldn't go in the bank and get a dime out their own bank account. Ask them what they did. Not a damn thing because they couldn't do nothing about it. So, I mean, you know, like I said before, you know, y'all, we not in a position to even protect the interest of the money that we got in the bank. Matter of fact, we don't even own the interest that's built on the money or, or that, that's grown off the money that we put in the bank. We don't even control or own the interest of that money. So how can the hell you have power for, for, for that comment you said about reparations? How can you have power when it comes to monetary reparations? And then, like I said, most of you ain't going to do nothing but give, him, give it back to them anyway. Because you ain't got sense enough to know what else to do with it. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, you, <laughs> I mean, it's all when, 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 when you, when you, when you, when you run like that to truth being spoken, I mean, you got to really, and this is not to talk down or broad beat you. But you got to understand what you're saying when you're trying to counter the truth. You got to understand what you're saying before you even say it. When you attempt to counter the truth that we speak on this platform, you got to, you, you, you know, you got to really come with something better than that. Because <laughs> many people have tried even stuff better than what you just said. In in uh <laughs> in, 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 in in at the end of the day, you know, they was left looking uh you know flaw flawful, you know, they was they was looking crazy. You know, I mean we <laughs> I mean all all that money that Fair Khan had running through his hand, billions and billions of dollars. Especially from them donations during them Savior's Day. Has that de did anything to liberate us? With, with a couple of punk ass farms in Alabama and Georgia? I mean, come on. That ain't even enough to, feel, to, to feed the whole membership of the Nation of Islam, let alone to feed 44 plus million uh, indigenous black Americans in this country. So, I mean, come on, let's 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 be realistic about this whole situation. Them farms they got in the South can't even feed the whole entire organization membership of the Nation of Islam. So, you know, it can't feed 44 million black people in this country. Right. So what success has the Nation of Islam gained from all that money coming through Farrakhan's hands? Oh. Since this is the brother you say also that that's that like fair kind, you know, what what has all that money done to liberate us as a people? Every time I looked up, it was supposed to went through the three to some damn three year economic plan. Huh. And then I remember one time. When I was processing as a member in that organization under Farrakhan's uh, 
Nation Islam uh, faction. Uh, I remember him telling people at a Sunday uh, lecture he gave in Chicago that uh, if anybody attempted to try to go in the coffers to take money out that they put in, that they was going to kill them. Wait a minute. So what, what? Why would you even think people would even go in the money, go in and try to take the money out the coffers when y'all got the money secured anyway? You see what I'm saying? See, that ain't nothing but a, a psychological tactic right there, which is simply called nothing but running uh, the con game on people. And this is what Malcolm X saw at the end of his tenure in the Nation of Islam which eventually got him uh, assassinated once he started finding out the truth and putting the truth out there for what it is, even like it is now in the nation of Islam, which is all they doing is just conning people out of money. Like these other uh, pseudo uh, pro-black organizations is, mm. and you ain't getting nothing back in return, but a bunch of lip service. <laughs> And every day Sunday, uh, qu church choir, because it ain't no different from the Christian church choirs they give uh, every Sunday. It ain't no different. It's just up under. The only difference is is that it, it's it's up under a, a crescent and a five pointer star emblem, but it's still a choir. Mm -hmm. You you know that's it. <laughs> So, like I said before, I mean, you know, <laughs> we need to understand and wake up and smell the coffee for what it is and stop playing games. We are in a much more worse position than our ancestors was and even than our ancestors was during the civil rights movement because we ain't accomplished a damn thing in over 50 some years since mm -hmm. the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, we need to stop playing. We are, we are, we are, matter of fact, we are, this generation we in now today is so-called foundational black Americans is the biggest laughing stock of all generations of foundational black America, as you call it. Mm -hmm. And with that said, I yield my mic. All righty then. <laughs> All right, then. I, I just want to make this last point, which you brought up. Um, before we get out of here, just to just to piggyback off what you said earlier about the African, these people obsessed with Africa thing, and uh, we still got Brother Robert still talking about what God said. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. Uh, can you see the screen to live? Uh, if you put it up there, yeah, yeah, I see a picture. What is that? Okay. This is the picture. I, for, I forgot what country this is in. But this is a... a, a, a Does African that look woman. like a human carcass? No, that's a, that's an African woman. She puts... Uh, in her culture, where she's at... Now, this is an African woman. In her culture, they put... They put cow manure on the floor. Right. I don't know the reason why. They do that, but that's how they live. They they cover the floor with cow manure. Okay, okay. This is one of this is one of their customers. Customs. Now, see, Africans do many different things. There are Africans who who do this, and they do a whole lot of bizarre things. You know, to us it'd be bizarre because I know none of those pan Africans that I know of. They're not going to take no cow manure. And put it on that floor and rub it down like and she she's doing right, it like no, right. no big deal. That's how they live. Right. Africans also have other other customs. Uh matter of fact, some things had to be Ag outlawed. Uh and not to cut you off, ask ask uh, what's his name? Uh Robert, whatever his name is, ask him what God gonna do about that. <laughs> about what? With that picture you just showed. <laughs> <laughs> And give me a break with that God BS. Go ahead, okay, brother. Look, look, Africans, Africans eat termites. They eat antelope. They eat tarantulas. 
they eat, they eat a lot of different things we wouldn't even dare to even talk about. Uh, some of those Africans don't like albino people. They don't like light-skinned people. They don't like light-skinned people. They they view light skin as a curse. So if you're a light-skinned Negro, they wouldn't like you anyway because you're too light-skinned. They, they view light skin as a curse. Mm -hmm. Some of those African people believe like when the when the HIV thing was 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 uh, uh, um, rampant, they believe that you can have sex with an infant and uh, that'll that'll cure HIV. They believe that type of stuff. When those Pan Africans talk, they talk about those Africans who have adapted European ways. That's who they talk. About. They're not talking about all Africans. They talk about the Africans who basically live how we live here in the United States. That's who they're talking about. They're not talking about the Africans who really still uh, live traditionally and whatever. They talk about the Africans who speak English. Most of most of them speak English, and also they talking about the ones that put like the one that put that cow maneuver maneuver on oh, the they floor. They're not interested in nobody like that. Oh, okay. okay. You, you, know, you know, people like Bakari and Guy Nollywood, you know, they wouldn't they wouldn't even go to her house. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't even go to her house. Because we know what cow manure smell like. Right, right. <laughs> you know, so I mean it's all bogus. This is the whole thing is just bogus. It's just some feel good fantasy rhetoric stuff that and, and ask them and ask them Africans. Why is majority of their countries uh, led by uh, languages, uh, uh, top languages uh, are European, like uh, French, Portuguese, English, mm. German, or uh, 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 even uh, I think Spanish? Ask them that. <laughs> Most of the leading uh, languages in all those 54 or some African countries on that continent is European dialect, straight up yep. out of Europe. That's right. <laughs> I was tripping off of that because, you know, I was watching one of those commercials and, um, and then the doctor, one of those African doctors was talking about how they was treating the patients. And he sounded like he was French. Yeah. I'm like, what? He sounded like a French, like he's a French person. Come to find out, right. the majority, they said the majority of the countries, that's their national language is French. Right. Or English. Yeah. Or English. Mm -hmm. And some of them speak Spanish. Yep. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Robert going off. Robert said. <laughs> Robert said, y'all think y'all know more than God. That's y'all problem. That would be y'all downfall. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to see Robert here. I don't know why he like to hang out with me. <laughs> Robert already know how I am. He, he knows how I right, am. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so, brother, sir, Robert, why are you big mad, bro? <laughs> 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 Robert caught up caught up in that religious stuff. You know, I've been I've been there and done that, brother Robert. You know, enjoy yourself. That's all I can tell you. Enjoy Ramadan. Enjoy yourself. Stop tripping off what other people do or whatever. Um, but religion is, is one of the number one things that divide us. You know, Robert, Robert might don't want to work with me, and a lot of Muslims don't want to work with me because. I don't like Farrakhan. Yeah, but I, I like you though. What they have to do with your and my relationship because I don't like Farrakhan or I don't like God. What they have to do with anything? That's your business. <laughs> but see, religion divide us. Mm -hmm. divide us divide, it's, a, it's, a, it's very divisionary. That was and one also, of the first things the European used to divide and conquer us with. <laughs> yeah, religion. Mm -hmm. And then came alcohol. <laughs> yep. They then came religion, they bring the fire water. Then came heroin and crack cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> but my thing, I'm gonna close this out though here. See, my thing is now the religion thing, I can understand because it don't make no difference all around the world. 
uh, mm. religion has been practiced, spirituality has been practiced. Mm. So that, that's easy mm. for people to get caught up into that stuff because they already programmed mm -hmm. to believe in some kind of invisible spirit, right. spooky stuff. Oh, ask the Haitians, how's their or uh, African gods helping them, by the way? <laughs> 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 I mean, they didn't even get, they had just got over a hurricane and here comes some more crap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm like, dang. <laughs> You can't win for losing. Then, then the president got assassinated. Yep, yep. When they president just recently got assassinated. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, damn, it never stops. But uh, <clears throat> on that note, we're gonna get out of here. Thank you, brother Talil, for coming here for a few minutes. Yes, sir. I just wanted to to bring that uh, that topic to us, and uh, also again. Um, we want to dedicate this live to our brother, soul brother James, who is the father of the deacons. And he, uh, this is the uh, anniversary of his trans transition. So I want to uh, acknowledge soul brother James. And of, of course, acknowledge um, and show compassion and condolences to the brothers for the anniversary of the loss of their father. Of whom they say they, I remind them of, because he talked the way I talk. So uh, you know, so apparently he must have been really, really cool. <laughs> talk the way we talk. And uh, thank you, brother Robert. You're always welcome to to come here live. Hey, what's up, that Talib? I tell everybody I said peace, and I'm out of here. I talk okay. to y'all on the flip. Peace. Right. Right. Okay. And we are out of here. And we'll ke catch everybody on the flip. Thank you, Brother Robert, the twins, those in the chat room, Brother Talib, those who are listening and those who will be listening to this broadcast later. We'll catch you on the other side. And as Don Cornelius used to always say, as in parting, we wish you love, peace, and so, 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 so. we are Audi 5000.